Who's this video for? It could be for you or it could be for someone that you know, it could be for a family member. Um, one thing we do all know is that this country and I guess more importantly this state of Victoria is in for a pretty rough ride in the next little while and there's going to be a lot of people, there already is a lot of people, who are out of a job and probably feeling um, a little bit undervalued and, and all the other associated emotions that go with that and it's 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 not good it's it's a bad deal um it's a deal that i wish i could wish away but you wouldn't know that if you went on to your linkedin or your social media and, and there's lots of people who are sort of i guess covering or, or or maybe they're shaky in their jobs and they know that they're at risk and 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 everything they're just trying to sort of hold it together and they don't really know how to express that they need help so what am I hoping for? What I was hoping for is, what I've tried to do here is to condense 15 years. I want to do something uh, for those who, you know, I may never meet, um, but trying to condense 15 years of experience in dealing with companies, you know, one to 10,000 um, across talent and job hunting and all that sort of thing and try to condense it into something that is helpful to what is going to be a very large cohort of people that are um, looking for a job in circumstances that they've never done before. Uh, and I do hope that this can be a little bit helpful, that you can sort of... The thing is, there's going to be people in your network, there's going to be people that you know, that you, and you'll have no idea that they're going through what they're going through right now. Because um, they're not going to tell you. And it's all going to look fine. And I do hope that you'll, sh if you do see value in this, that you'll share this to those people. And like I say, just letting them know, signalling that you're there and that you'll help if you can, and that they're not in it, to they're not in it on their own, and and that we're all going to work together to bring everyone back into the game and and to to try and bring people back into um, opportunities and, and and valuing through their work. Um, so I do hope that you'll share this. I do hope that it's useful. Um, and like I say, I just want to do something. So, uh, share away, start the conversations. Um, and my heart's with everyone right now is going through the uh, uncertainty and the challenge of, of maybe job hunting in a, in a pretty unusual environment. Okay. So the first thing that we have to do is look internally to create our own employee narrative. Now we will work with businesses a lot about creating their employer narrative about explaining what the life would be working with that business. I'm talking about flipping that script and creating an employee narrative to be able to communicate, this is the value that I can bring to your business. Whether it's individual talents, individual skill sets, potentially uh, clients or types of clients that might come along and follow you into a new employer. These are some of the things, this is the story, the narrative that you have to have nailed down before you have any interviews or talk to any hiring managers or start to tap your network for opportunities. Employee narrative, these are my skill sets. Some of them are gonna be quite generic. Some of them are gonna be very specific. Those specific skills are not going to fit with everybody and you have to take the risk that those skill sets are going to be valued to, by somebody and certainly by somebody that you would like to work with. This is about getting to the employer that you want to get to. This is not about finding any job. This is about if we're going to approach the companies that we want to work for, that we really want to work for, we have to make sure that we have our own employee narrative really strongly laid out, nailed down in our own head, if we want to be any chance of getting to the starting line with these big businesses. It's a key element, it's really important, and it's not that hard to do when you dig internal and you start to list down some of the things you've achieved and being able to build a bit of a communication narrative around that. The next thing we have to think about is our, I guess, our external view. What do people see when they see me? So let's say Christian Cunningham is out there looking for a job, looking for the job that he really wants. Uh, I've got to think about when someone puts my name down or sees my name, what are they going to have as pillars behind that that they think about when they think about Christian Cunningham? So I've got to have a really well laid out LinkedIn profile, certainly if you're an industry that, uh, that that's relevant. And I think there's something like 11 million Australian 
workers on LinkedIn. And that gives you some idea as to how many industries are now on LinkedIn. Uh, you've got to have a bomb-proof, really taut CV. It's got to be really tight. It's got to be, look, people will give you advice as to what it looks like. My instinct is three pages is an absolute ceiling and certainly in a challenging market because no one's going to read it if it's long, long CV. No one's going to get that far in. It's really got to be high impact and it's got to be as small as possible. Uh, You've got to think about your social media. I know this is a reasonably modern issue, but you've got to have a look at what, if someone Googles or someone Googles Christian Cunningham, what do they see from a social's point of view? Do they see uh, silly drunken silliness or do they see something a little bit more professional? Now, um, I'm not saying you have to go out there and scrub everything, but I do think you have to know what people are going to find. Again, they're going to be looking for reasons not to hire right now. So you've just got to mitigate as much of that risk as you can. So when it comes to that external view, what do they see? They, they look at me and they say, so we need to work out and we need to get our CV absolutely taut, tight like a drum. If it's really long, if it's rambling, if it's in a font that's hard to understand, um, these things are going to work. Well, it's just an instant no starter. Uh, your LinkedIn profile has to be absolutely bomb-proof. It has to have a photo. It has to have a list of all your jobs and your education. It has to have the some dot points around those jobs as to these were my achievements, these were some of the things that I did in these roles. We've got to connect the dots for employers when they look at us from an external view and make that connection really easy to make their decision really easy to say, well, this person is very easy to quantify and I can fit them in a box because that's how a lot of people think and, and, and certainly in times like this. Uh, I can fit them in this box. I can understand. I can connect with that. Um, and when they look at that external view, you want them to be able to make an easy jump. So get your LinkedIn, get your CV, get your social media under control. Um, when it comes to interviewing, bear in mind, most interviews are going to be electronic, which I know would scare a number of people. I totally get that. You got to think about your video quality. You got to think about your lighting quality, your position of where you're sitting when you're talking on the on the on the video chat. Uh, it's it's a totally different experience to sitting opposite someone and having all those verbal and non-verbal cues that you get when you're sitting in a room with someone. And you really need to practice to get good at doing the video, to looking at the little dot on the camera and not averting your gaze. It's exhausting to be ter- perfectly honest doing all this time on the video, but you really need to focus down because making a judgment over a vi- this is all new to everybody in reality. So you've really got to make everything as easy as possible for someone when they make an external view of you uh, to be able to take a short road and say, this, this, this all makes sense. It fits, skill set's right. And everything that we've seen so far makes us think that this person can add value to our business. So I think focus on your external view. Um, It could be the difference. Now we say we've got our internal narrative, we've got our sort of uh, employer narrative sorted, and we've got our external view sorted. How do we get to the line? How do we get to the interview in 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 a sea of applications? Look, you get some advice around how many CVs you should have. My instinct is if I'm doing it, I want three CVs. I want my sort of stock standard industry CV that I'm a specialist in or that I've got experience in. I want a bit more of a generic CV if I'm applying for jobs outside of my area of expertise. And I want what I call a high risk CV. And that is my third CV that has all my really high quality skill sets in that I'm going for the the overreach job, the job that I'm probably not going to get, but I take the risk of putting really specific skill sets in that in the hope that it catches someone's eye and maybe I get lucky. Um, your general CV, the one that from your industry is the one you would use the most part. Uh, anything you're applying for outside of your industry, you'd use your, your, your really generic CV. And then your third one is your high risk. So in relation to contacting hiring managers and these sorts of things. I'm, I'm not saying don't do it, but what I would say is that there's gonna be a lot of pressure on decision makers and internal recruiters in companies right now with correspondence flying everywhere, people sending 5,000 word emails trying to make their case. Put your application in, take the steps that they've asked you to. If there's a contact name there and it's a job you really, really want, I would say you can contact them, but keep the email very short. Let your CV and your LinkedIn profile do the heavy lifting. You can say, hi, I'm Christian Cunningham. I'll put in an application. Yours is a company I'd really like to work with. 
I'm contactable anytime on this number. Please feel free to get in touch. Now you can do whatever you like. You can send the 5,000 word email, but that is what I would do. Keep it small, keep it tight, and just try and catch an eye, really. That's all we're hoping to do in that circumstance. And then we hope that our history does the talking. Bear in mind, you're probably gonna apply for a lot of jobs you're not gonna get. You may not get a response. No one may get a response from a number of positions. So just try not to attach too much of an emotional hook to it. Do the steps, uh, keep a record of what you've done, and take it one step at a time. Follow the instructions that the companies have asked you to do. And if you're going to approach them directly, do it small, do it sharp, and don't make it an ultimatum, basically. Now, who's going to help me? Who's going to help me on my journey in finding a new job? Um, my first instinct is that you actually cannot rely on one single person to help you. And if you're going in expecting someone to help you, I suspect that you're most likely going to be disappointed. Um, even some of your longest term relationships you've got to bear in mind right now are going to be under their own pressures, keeping their jobs or um, running their businesses or working in lockdown and doing everything by video and maybe watching a life's work go up in smoke. So you do need to be prepared for the fact that no one is going to help you. Now that's a starting position. From there, I would say that you will be surprised at who will help you and that it may not be the person you expected and it may be a person that is outside your everyday sphere that can actually help you. So I'm not saying don't try by any stretch of the imagination. What I am saying is do not expect even your closest family member, friends to be able to stick their neck all the way out for you. They will try, you might be able to send them a CV that they can forward on to someone, but my, how do I put this? Lower, have low expectations of what help you're gonna get from people around you. I think that um, this is a trying time for a lot of people and there can be, there's a risk that some of those relationships can be tested if you're sending a, an email every second day saying, has anything happened, has anything happened, has anything happened? The starting position is no one's going to help you and you may be surprised who in the end actually does help you. With that said, this is the time to find out who is going to help you. And I think that there can be a really methodical approach to how you contact your network for help in these situations. First things first, do not have any pride or ego about contacting people to help you find a job. I don't even mean, even if you're not in a position where you have to race to get a job, do not ever feel any issue around getting in touch with someone about, hey, you know what, um, I, I'm, I've been made redundant or my business has folded. Do you, have, do you know of anything in your business that I could come and talk to you about or that you can help me get a leg up? Do not ever hesitate to have that conversation with anyone because I tell you this right now, the shoe will be on the other foot at some point. You've got to think about who owes you a favor. You've got to think about who you owe a favor to. You've got to think about where you can bank up some uh, a future favor, perhaps, if you like. So it's really about getting your network, let's say the inner circle of your network, let's say First Connections, it might be 50 people. You bank a list of those people and you say, who out of this group of people can help me or could possibly help me? And you get in touch with as many of them as you like. And then you think about your second rung of your network, people that you maybe know, maybe that you've met, maybe you've worked with before, but you're not particularly close to. Have no reservation about contacting them either. Again, do it small, do it tight. Don't put pressure on them. Just ask the question. Again, you might be surprised who it is who ends up helping you in this process. Most people will be pretty uh, open-minded to helping, but also most people are gonna be at fear of risk in their own job right now. They're gonna be uh, at businesses that potentially have hiring freezes. Um, they're gonna be not in a position of authority where they feel like they can go and make that call for you. But work on the inner circle of your network and then get to the next ring and it might even be the third ring, that sort of 200 people out there that you might be able to tap someone that you met a couple of times and you say, you know what, is there anything happening there? And they might surprise you. So be methodical about it. First contact, second round contact, third round contact, and be really methodical about how you go about it and keep a record and it just might surprise The next thing is, I feel like I've been talking for days, but you might need to take a short-term career turn. 
and you might need to think about working in an industry outside that that you're accustomed to. There's two sides to this coin. One is it's not always, well, there's probably 10 sides to this coin, but let's say it's not always easy to jump industries, but my firm view in the next 12 to 18 months is, is gonna be about making a living rather than necessarily launching your career forward. Now, if you're lucky enough to continue to launch your career forward, good luck to you, and may the wind be in your sails. But in the case that you have to take a short detour, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And 12 to 18 months, two years, three years, whenever people look back, this is gonna be a situation where lots and lots of people are gonna have to take a detour off their career. So I suggest you go and look at industries and get in as quick as you can if if you've decided that you're gonna do it. Go and look at industries that you think that there's some transferable skills and start applying, start contacting people. Use your first connection network and say, can you help me get to this? Can you help me get to that? Get in, the sooner the better. Every week that goes past, more people are gonna be thinking about that detour. The second part about the detour, and this is the surprising part, is that you never know where it ends. So if you decide that you're in X industry and you're gonna go and give Y a go because you know this person's second cousin can get you an interview, and you're starting that job, you just never know. Lots of people change careers multiple times and end up in something that makes them far happier anyway and they reevaluate their whole life. So don't necessarily look at a career detour as a negative. Who's to say you were so happy doing what, what you were doing anyway? So look at a career detour as an opportunity and that you can go and make something in a, and you've got a whole new fresh start. You can go and do something totally different. So I'd encourage people to look at career detours right now. Again, long term, if you do get back to your original industry, no one's going to care, right? Everyone had to do what they had to do. No one is going to care. No one's going to care. So go and do it. Give it a try. Um, and again, use your networks as much as you can to make that jump into that new detail. Now on mindset. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do some pop psychology, but I do think that it's useful to think about this. Um, the, the three things that I think you're going to need right now are going to be patience, they're going to be self-confidence and it's going to be resolve, like grit and resolve. So patience is going to be the first one. It's going to be the most tested because you're going to be making applications to jobs and you may not get a response. You may not get a response to 10 or 15 or 20 jobs and it's an, it's not a good deal. I, I, I'm not saying it's the right thing, but this could easily happen that you just go responseless for a long period of time. You must keep your self-confidence up during that time. It's not your fault. You can't control it. You can't control what other people do. And if you have your employee narrative right, you need to be ready for when the opportunity strikes. So getting caught into no one is responding to my applications, therefore I am of no value is wrong. If you have proven value and you've got a history of proven value, you just simply haven't found the right place for that value to be utilized. So keep that self-confidence. Keep reminding yourself that this is my this is the value of the employee narrative. This is what my value is. This is my skill set. This is the business I can bring. This is what I've achieved. Keep that in your thinking as much as you can. And resolve. Keep fighting. Keep digging. It's not over. You're dealing with human beings. Eventually, you're going to break through. Eventually, that opportunity is going to present in this industry or another. You just got to keep digging. Get up every day. This is now your job looking for a job. Resolve, self-confidence, patience. Number one, patience. Consider a side hustle. Side hustling is a fantastic idea. I don't like the expression. I think it's very, well, it's been overused a little bit, but if you have something you've been thinking about doing, a business you've been thinking about starting, there is zero stopping you from starting to take steps in that direction. If you think there's a product that you can sell, if you think that there's a hobby that you can turn into some cash flow, cash flow, this is the time to do it. If you're just gonna be applying for jobs all day anyway, you might as well do something that might start a new, uh, I guess a new sort of sprout for you to be able to go and do something different. I encourage anyone, even employed everyone, to have a little side hustle if they can, um, to have multiple streams of income, to have something that keeps them sort of keeps their mind off the the main game. I think it's useful to have anyway, but if right now you're in a position where all you're doing is firing out applications and into the abyss and hoping and waiting and being disappointed, 
let's go start something. There's nothing stopping you. So get in there. If you've got an idea, nail it down, write your business plan. It doesn't have to be five pages long. It could be one page long, it could be half a page. And just get started because there's nothing stopping you. Nothing, nothing. Go and start your side hustle. If it's something you want to do, add it to the list and you can keep it going while, you, while you're looking for a job and maybe it grows into something you never, ever know. I guess the last point I would make is that the sun will rise again. In the case that this job hunting experience is longer term than you'd hope, and it may be, and you need to be prepared for that with patience, self-confidence and resolve. But in the case that it is, when that sun does rise, it will eventually rise. And when it does, you've got to be ready and you've got to be excited about that opportunity. You've got to be ready to go. You can't be dispirited. Um, Doing some quick maths, even if unemployment rises to 15%, that means that 85% of uh, willing and able people are employed in something, whether it means a career deviation, whether it means you spend a bit of time building a side hustle, whether it means you just take maybe the first two month break of your life, do it consciously and enjoy the time that you have because there's a very good chance you're gonna be back on the hamster wheel in a pretty short period of time. And that hamster wheel, all of a sudden, you've forgotten all the things that you were working on in the time that you had to yourself. So make the most of the time that you have. The sun will rise. The opportunity will present if you do the work. Your job now is to find a job. It is an unpaid job to find a job. But it is the most important job you're going to have because you need to think about what you want to do and what you want to bring to the next opportunity when it comes and it will if you do the work. So the sun will come up. You can bet your bottom dollar. Enjoy the time that you have while you have it.